What's going on, everybody? It is Physical Friday, and all summer we've been doing these challenges where we try to do something for five days, just like Bruce Lee says. If it works, absorb it. If it doesn't, discard it. Add in what is uniquely your own, and that is what we've been doing. We've been doing that with sleep. We've been doing that with nutrition, and one of the most fundamental things that I have done in the last few years to improve my own health and my physical conditioning is a flexibility program, a mobility program, a stretching program. I found Joe Hippensteel, Ultimate Human Performance, and he has helped me immensely. I can't even I can't even really say how much because I'm not even sure yet. My potential is now through the roof and my injuries have gone down. I feel better. He told me I was going to feel like I was 17 again. He told me this was the fountain of youth. We've already had him on the podcast. It was one of the more popular ones we've ever had. I got a tremendous amount of feedback. I've got him on today with Mimi, and they're going to show us three exercises for the lower body, one for the upper body that we're going to try to do for five days in a row. And if you can, you know, today's Friday, so you can start today and you can do it through the weekend and into next week, or you can start Monday and try to do it Monday through Friday, but try this for five days. All right, Joe and Mimi, how are you? Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Th thanks for having us. Tom. Awesome. Absolutely. So first of all, if, as we're getting started in this, let's tell everybody how they can find out more about you, more about your programs, more about what you do. Yeah, uh, you can go to our website. It's ultimatehumanperformance.com, UHP, uh, ultimatehumanperformance.com. Uh, there's some free workshops there. You can get a, get a feel for what we do, what we teach. And as Tom said, it's, it's centered around advanced training techniques, starting with flexibility, because if you don't have movement, you can't do the rest of the workouts. So we, we have a very um, uh, detailed program with an exact protocol, exact standards, to reach certain flexibility standards uh, in order to open up the body to be 17 again. Okay. Well, if you had uh, a short routine that we would challenge people to do for five days, let's, let's see it. And I, I'd like to see what you, what you suggest. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll do three for the lower body, which uh, will encompass the back, the hips, the knees, the ankles. Um, and I'm going to have Mimi, my partner, Mimi Ney, uh, demonstrate some of these positions for you. She's on a massage table. Um, so the first one we call, we don't have fancy names like in yoga. We just call it what it is. You sit, you cross your legs and you lean. So we call it sit, cross, lean. What she's doing there is being able to, with her legs crossed, put her head all the way down on the ground. That's what we call our first level of lumbar flexion. If you go to a typical physical therapist, they're going to do a sit and reach test, which involves the hamstrings also, which to me totally skews the results of this, of the lumbar flexion. We got to get that lumbar to start bending forward, take some of the arch out of your back. That's why people have back problems. Now, Mimi, would you turn to the side to do that one again? This way you can get a view of it again. And she can go right down, put her head on the ground. You see that wow. her, her body looks like a turtle there across the top. Um, she, now she's going to show you what it looks like when people are very tight. Mm -hmm. These are going to be up in the air. You're going to be trying to reach for the floor in front of you. So that's the challenge. If you can grab a hold of, the leg of your furniture in front of you or your bed, bed post or something is something that's uh, or a dumbbell that's heavy enough to start pulling your way down. We have certain rules when we stretch. I'm going to give you just a couple of them today. Never go past a seven in pain when you stretch. Number one, when we're in the building phase where you can't reach our ranges of motion, you hold for two minutes, you rest for one minute. In the rest period for one minute, we call that the dead zone. I'm going to show you, Mimi's going to show you after she comes out of a stretch what the dead zone looks like. So the dead Lit. zone is the dead zone is my absolute favorite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, have to you sit there for two minutes and let me tell you something. Some of these stretches, you know, it, you're, you're not going to look like Mimi. I don't look like Mimi <laughs> and it is painful at first, but the dead zone, you, it, it's like this reward. You lay there for, for one minute and you get this whole full minute to recover. And it is amazing and awesome. And I love it. Yeah. Um, when, when you first start this, this position again, never go past a seven in pain, do the best you can. You hold at a seven and you should feel yourself start to melt. So you'll actually go a little bit lower, a little bit lower. The reason we hold for two minutes, we have to give the brain time to engage with the proprioceptors and the muscles. And it's going to ask your muscles, what's the pain level? If the, if the muscles report back to the brain and say it's an eight or higher, 
your brain's going to say shut down, contract, and defend, not going to let go. If you go seven or lower, the brain says, okay, let's start adapting by stretching. Mm -hmm. That's why we hold for two minutes. Then when you come out of it, you're going to feel, this is what it sounds like. (laughs) Your lower back and your legs. And if you feel like that, it means you made progress. So don't feel like you're hurting anything. It means you made progress. That's what they're not understanding in the, in the athletic world or the medical world is you got to have that time for blood to fill in the gaps that you've opened up. So we got to absorb blood for one minute. We call it the dead zone. Okay, Mimi, come on up. The second range of motion that we're going to show you, and this should be done in this order, is called the lie leg over. Why? Because she's going to lie down. She's going to pick one leg up and pull it across. Would you demo that for me? So her opposite arm is down on the ground. She uses her right arm to pull the left knee down to the ground. For people who are tight, show them where they're going to be. They're probably going to be a foot off the ground. Mm -hmm. So so we want to hold there at a seven, and we do multiple repetitions. We suggest for maybe your first week, do three repetitions of each. Three of the sit cross lean, take your dead zones for one minute, and then do three of the leg overs. She's going to go her left leg first, then she's going to take a minute rest if she needs it, Sometimes when you switch to the other side, you don't really need the. And she's going to demo this other one. Okay. And again, we're going to go two minutes with the left leg. Take a minute rest if you need it. And then when you switch legs, some people don't have to wait a whole minute. If you need more than a minute, take it. Till till your body calms down. It's absorbing blood. Then we switch legs. Then we'll go back and do the left leg again. Then we go back and do the right leg again. We'll do three reps of each one. Gotcha. So this is both video and audio. So if you're listening to audio and you you weren't able to see that, she's laying down completely flat on her back. She puts her, her, let's just say her, her left leg, uh, her arms are, are out at her side, uh, like a, like at a cross left leg comes up to 90 degrees. The knee is bent and then she pushes it down to the opposite side of her body and touches the ground. So it's just, uh, you know, you've seen people do this kind of stretch before you just kind of twist. It's a twisting kind of stretch where one leg is going to the opposite side of her body. Okay. And, and you'll, you'll see that this, um, this, that's a fairly, common range of motion but people don't finish it they don't know there's a standard the standard for it is if, if she's pulling her left leg across her left opposite arm her left arm should be touching the ground and her left knee should come all the way across rolling up on your hips till the left knee touches the ground that's the standard and literally we'll see in yoga classes they do the stretch but they never finish it because they don't know there's a standard mm. when you reach our standards aches and pains go away a lot of medical labels go away when you go to a chiropractor they put you in this position and then they crunch you. They put a lot of pressure on you um, where you get you know, a crack in your back or, or adjustments in your back. What we do is we want to slowly work our way so the muscles allow us to get to that position. You do it over a period of days or weeks, and then you can go there to that position and your body's free to move. Okay? Gotcha. Okay. All right. So that's number, number two. Let's see what number three is. Okay. The third range of motion is, is, is more challenging. Uh, it's called the... It's called the uh, lie back quad because ultimately we'll show you what the standard is and what we're working towards and then we'll show you how to modify it for people who can't get there right away which most people will not be able to would you demo that so you're going to kneel down you're going to sit on your heels if you can your heels will be just outside of your hips and she's going to lie all the way back should be able to go flat on her back wow. while she's sitting on her heels that's the ideal that's the standard when you do this, you're opening up the hip flexors, which allows the hips to rock back where they're supposed to be. Otherwise, because we have a, I'll show you for the, for, for, for the um, video portion, um, your hips are like a box of bone and they sit on a ball and socket joint. When you're sitting a lot, which we all do, we sit when we drive, we sit when we eat, we sit at our computer, we sit on the couch. We're, we're in this bent position where our hip flexors right here, they get too tight. Yes. And when they're too tight, our hips are stuck in the forward position. Then just to stand up straight, we end up arching our back. What we have to do is, is, is get the hip flexors to loosen up so the hips come back and takes the arch out. If you can't do this, you will have back problems at one point or another. If you take rid of that's called anterior pelvic tilt. We want to get rid of that tilting forward of the hips, of the hips because the, the quads and the hip flexors are too tight. Now, maybe if you take some pillows, she's going to show you, if you can't get to this position, how we modify it. I'll just tell you right now, you might need a lot of pillows. 
<laughs> I mean, we have some guys that use five pillows. I, 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 I did when I started. I, I used all the couch cushions. And I think it's really important here to, to, to understand that anybody can do this. And the, the pain level of a seven in my experience, and in, in, in I've been there, like I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, the, the wrestler mentality of, well, if, if it's hard to do, then you should probably just do more. But that's not the case because what you're saying is, is that your body will contract and protect and you're not actually able to do it. And so the pillows, you may think, well, I don't, I don't think I need pillows. I'm just going to tough it out and do this. But if you right. get to the pillows, you're actually relaxing and, and they are crucial to making progress through this, at least in my opinion, that they have been crucial to my progress. And I can get almost, I mean, I can get all the way to the ground, not like Mimi, but I can, I can get down there now. But it was because I used the pillows uh, for, for a while that I'm able to to make that progress. Yeah, I think it's important to note that, again, we have a lot of rules along with this specific standards and specific protocol, but one of the rules or paradigms is you're in what's called the building phase. People think that you're either flexible or you're not flexible and you should just tough it out, whatever. And like Tom said, I saw Tom go through a transformation where he couldn't even get close to some of these ranges and he stayed at it day after day, week after week. And literally, as your body opens up, you become youthful again. Mm. This is actually part of the fountain of youth. You have to be able to move. So for Mimi right now, if you can't sit back on your heels, she has a big thick pillow there. Some people have two or three pillows, literally. Go ahead and sit, sit up more. I feel, pull that other top floor down. Some people are going to be so tight, they can barely sit back at all. That's okay. Go to the level that you can reach that seven, but not to an eight and hold there for two minutes. And then you come out of it, you lie flat, do your dead zone. And we do it again. And hopefully you can get down to one pillow. And then you put pillows behind you or a couch that you can lean on. Mm -hmm. Now, now that's comfortable for her. Uh, for, for people who are tight, you may get almost there. You may get further than that. But the key is to make progress every day if you can. A little bit of progress. Three repetitions. She'll come out of it then, go into the dead zone. She'll go back and do it again. Okay. okay. So those awesome. are the three main ones for the lower body. Now, one word of caution. After you do three sets of the quad stretch. Because we end up leaning back, we arch our back a little bit. We're trying to get rid of that arch by opening up the hip flexors. But once you do the quad stretch three reps, we want you to go back and do one more leaning forward to make sure that you de-arch the back. Okay. Because some people will push so hard and so far, they end up arching too, too much. We have to go back and de-arch the back so they don't walk away with an arch in their back. Okay. Okay? Got That's it. That's the third one for the lower body. Okay. Um, ready for the upper body, Tom? Yep. Let's try the upper body. Okay, so Mimi, come on over. So this one is called arms behind and up. Why? Because we put our arms behind and we lift them up, okay? <laughs> the number one shoulder injury that people have and the reason they experience pain is not torn rotator cuff, it's not torn labrum. That's what everybody talks about when they talk about shoulder injuries. It's bicep tendonitis. Your biceps are too tight. Your biceps is a, is a muscle that crosses two joints, elbow joint, shoulder joint. So you can't just straighten your arm to, fit, to finish stretching it. You have to take the bicep all the way back here, ideally up to 120 degrees. Show the, I'll show you that with Mimi. Now, most people are going to be somewhere in here. If you can get someone to help you, great. Otherwise, you've got to stand in front of a countertop and start lowering down. You want to try and get it, raise it higher, higher, higher. This is 90 degrees. The goal here is to get to 120, even with the top of your head. At 120... Your bicep is completely stretched out, and I'm telling you, it eliminates 80% of people with shoulder pain, eliminates the pain. Hmm. Otherwise, you have bicep tendonitis. So if you can't go to 120, you have bicep tendonitis, guaranteed. It's just part of, part of life. Uh, we don't stretch that, that muscle. When you're young, if you remember, we used to hang on the monkey bars or on, on the rings or something and go upside down, bring all legs up upside down, so we're hanging like this. Yep. That's, what, that's what we should all be able to do. We have to do this in place of that. Hmm. Okay. So that's four, four exercises that, um, you know, if you, if you have the ranges, it doesn't take long at all. If you don't have the ranges and you're willing to, to give this a try, you're doing one to three reps of this with a one minute dead zone in between. And, uh, you know, this one of all the, of all the challenges that we've done this, this summer, this is the one that I urge you to try the, the most really. I mean, we've done some nutrition challenges, some sleep challenges, all of those are awesome. Um, but this one I think is, is something that is, is different 
that maybe you haven't tried before, or maybe you haven't tried it in this particular way. And let's, let's see what happens. If you like it, keep doing it. If you don't discard it. And if, if you are hungry for more, go to the website and check it out. They've got all kinds of programs. You've got a free, you got a seminar, a zoom seminar coming up that people could do um, like next week, right? It's coming up this Friday on the 16th, 16, 17, 18. And will you record that? Is that something that you'll record and put out after the fact if if yeah. this if this is later? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so for people who can attend, yeah. Yeah, there's that. And then your program, as we discussed before, you have twenty four ranges of motion that like like just like what we went through, we went through four of them. You have twenty four that you go through and you have the video that that I bought, which is all 24, Mimi demonstrating each one of these, and and you walk a class of Navy SEALs and CrossFit athletes and regular people and other type of, of athletes. You walk them through all 24 of these with a demo and everything. And that's what I did for until I just memorized the program. I just watched that every time and just, just followed along. And once you get to where you're you're meeting these ranges – all the time that you have to devote to it daily decreases. But, uh, you know, the only reason that I stuck with it as long as I have is because I noticed immediate benefit. And that's exactly what we're doing. If it, you know, absorb what is useful, discard what is not, add in what is uniquely your own. It's a beautiful quote by Bruce Lee, and that is the theme of our entire summer. So I want to thank you, Joe and Mimi, for showing us that. Hopefully this will be something that you absorb and, uh, and continue to do. All right, that's the Physical Friday for today. We'll see you guys next week. 